We are one nation, one people. When called upon to give from within, we come together and find that our capacity to help others is limitless. Here, we are fearless. What lies inside all of us is more than data. It's life. It's more than insight and medical research. It's vision and honor and compassion. What's flowing through America's veins is its diversity. The next great breakthrough will be found in each and every one of us. And what we find there will unlock mysteries, heal the sick, and eradicate disease. We ask for one million individuals to come forward and stand on this landmark in history. We ask America to do, once again, what she has always done, lead the way forward. We're one nation, one people, but all of us are different. And it's those very differences that will lead to answers for generations to come. Welcome everyone to the All of Us Research Program launch event. I'm Joanne Purton from WOMC Radio. I am so excited that you've chosen to be a part of this historic day. The future of health begins with each one of you. And today we'll learn about a research program that's seeking to accelerate health research and medical breakthroughs, enabling individualized prevention, treatment and care for all of us. It's pretty unusual to have so much fanfare around a research program, but this is a pretty unusual research program. We are calling on one million people from every walk of life to get involved in transforming the future of health. As I look around to all of you out here at Ford Field today, I see diversity in so many forms. What is diversity? Well, it's your uniqueness as an individual, along with your lifestyle, the environment in which you live, and your biology. We all come from different walks of life, and it's recognizing and appreciating that diversity that's at the heart of the All of Us Research Program. For the next hour, we're going to hear from leaders at the National Institutes of Health and key members of our Detroit community about the importance of this research program and the promise it holds. We're thrilled that we're going to have Eric Dishman with us today. But first, this report. Okay, there's an amazing lineup of speakers and activities taking place around the country today. To celebrate the launch of the All of Us Research Program, if you're watching at home, I welcome you to join the conversation at hashtag join all of us. That's hashtag join all of us. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing the very first speaker, Dr. Dara Richardson Heron. Dr. Richardson Heron is the All of Us Research Program's Chief Engagement Officer. She's a physician by trade and an advocate by choice. Dr. Richardson Heron leads the program's outreach efforts to enroll and retain those one million volunteers with a special focus on populations that have historically been underrepresented in research. Dr. Richardson Heron, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much and greetings. I am Dr. Dara Richardson Heron and I am the Chief Engagement Officer for the All of Us Research Program. I first want to extend my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to everyone for participating in today's celebration, marking the formal and official launch of this exciting new research effort. We certainly hope that through today's activities, you will walk away both informed about the All of Us Research Program and most importantly, excited to participate. The All of Us Research Program's goal is to bring together one million or more volunteers across the United States to donate health information for research. And among many other things, researchers may be able to use the information we collect to identify steps that we can all take to stay healthy much longer, to help us find better health conditions early and more often when they're most treatable, to better understand why different people respond differently to various medications and treatments, and also to develop more effective, personalized, and precise treatments that are based upon each of us as unique individuals. You know, our mission is simple. 
but bold to accelerate research and medical breakthroughs, enabling individualized prevention, treatment, and care for all of us. And certainly, as someone who's been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to be part of this program from its early days, first as an advisor and now as a member of the All of Us team, it has truly been amazing to see how much progress has been made so far. But you know what? Even more importantly, as a physician, as an advocate, and as a 21-year and counting breast cancer survivor, I am both hopeful and enthusiastic about the progress yet to be made. <clears throat> you know, over the past few months, our team has built the infrastructure, developed a website, tested systems, and brought together a great team across the nation. But today, it's when we add the real heart and soul to the program. Indeed, today is when we officially open our doors to invite everyone to join us. And with your help, we hope to transform the future of health. We hope to move from a time when healthcare is largely focused on treatment of chronic diseases to a time when we are shifting our focus more towards prevention. Imagine that for a moment. Imagine a future where illnesses can be prevented and the burden of disease minimized. Imagine a world where everyone participates in the development of new discoveries and therapies and everyone benefits. You know, an enormous amount of teamwork, dedication, determination, and passion has gone into bringing this day to fruition. And our continued success will only be possible through the continued cultivation and nurturing of valuable partnerships we forge with people, communities, and organizations across the country and we are just getting started. And to be clear, our mission is not just to find one million or more people to volunteer and share medical information with the program. Our mission is to find one million or more people who reflect the rich diversity of our nation, who will not only participate in the program, but also partner with us and help us create an opportunity to change health and healthcare for the benefit of everyone. And we're seeking adults of all ages, races, ethnicities, sexual orientation, socioeconomic and health statuses to join us in this unprecedented effort. And we're seeking people from every corner of the United States because we know all too well that where a person lives has the potential to have an enormous impact on their overall health. We must make sure that all communities are well represented in our program, particularly those who have been historically underrepresented in biomedical research, so that everyone has the opportunity to benefit from any new scientific discoveries and treatments. You know, one of the greatest things about this country is its rich diversity. And it's that diversity that the All of Us Research Program hopes to harness to help us learn more about and hopefully change the unfortunate reality that there are many communities that have a significantly higher disease burden than others. You know, health disparities are well known, but not at all well understood. And research has the potential to be a powerful change agent in that regard. But, you know, as exciting and promising as our research program truly is, we know that participation in research is not a simple decision for everyone. In fact, we know that many people are skeptical and even hesitant to participate in research, and with good reason. There have been unspeakable instances where unethical testing and research was performed often under the guise of quote unquote medical treatment, and in other cases, whole communities have simply not been invited to participate in research. But our program is different. And we are not shying away from these issues, but rather we are engaging and partnering directly with key stakeholders, trusted community, and provider organizations and participant partners. We are fully acknowledging and addressing their concerns head on because we must. The stakes are just too high not to. And we're also collaborating with our participant partners to build a program with policies and processes in place to make sure that the transgressions of the past are never, ever repeated. 
And when I say participant partners, I mean it. The All of Us research program is unique in this regard. One of our core values is to make sure that participants help to co-design the program with us because we know for sure that the outcome and the impact will be significantly enhanced by their presence. So now that you're all super excited about our program, I hope you will go to our website, joinallofus.org, to learn more. And please consider joining our program, because the only way we can improve health and health care for everyone is by making sure that research and research participations reflect the rich diversity of our nation. And you know, at the beginning of my remarks, I mentioned that a lot of teamwork, dedication, determination, and passion has contributed to making this day a reality. Well, certainly no one knows that to be more true than Dr. Francis Collins, an outstanding physician, an awesome leader, who has served as director of the National Institutes of Health since 2009, and he has dedicated his life to advancing scientific discovery to improve health. Dr. Collins has been a staunch advocate and champion for precision medicine for many years, and he is absolutely determined to make it a reality. That's because he knows the great potential that it has, the potential to transform and significantly enhance the future of health and health care for all of us. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Francis Collins. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dara, for that very kind introduction. And greetings to everyone. I'm taking part today in the opening of the All of Us Research Program with our partners here in New York in the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church. If all of us can make it here, we can make it anywhere. But this is a simulcast, so no matter where you're located right now, whether you're in Pasco, Washington, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, or someplace else watching online, we're all united by a common goal, building an amazing research resource that will make possible the next great discoveries in health and medicine. Let me start by saying that the All of Us Research Program is really about all of you and the power we together can bring as a nation of volunteers, curiosity seekers, health advocates, and innovators. So you'll be hearing from many different voices today about the huge impact this program can have for all of us, whether we're living with an illness or whether we're healthy and trying to stay that way. For my part, I want to share with you why this program will be so important for medical research. The National Institutes of Health, NIH, is the largest funder of medical research in the world. Our goal is to support medical research all over this country to understand how life works and how to prevent, treat, and cure illness. I've been involved in medical research for a long time, initially as a physician scientist supported by NIH, then as a leader of the Human Genome Project, and now as the proud director of this noble institution. So I speak with some knowledge and experience when I say that all of us is one of the most ambitious research efforts that our nation has ever undertaken. More than almost anything we've ever done, this program has the potential to shed new light on how to manage disease and keep people healthy. I know that's a bold statement, but I truly believe that this program will be a game changer for medical research and ultimately for human health. And we're inviting you to be part of this national adventure. Just two weeks ago, we marked the 15th anniversary of the successful completion of the International Human Genome Project, that landmark effort to read out the three billion letters in the Human DNA Instruction Book, has given us new insights into what makes each of us unique, from the color of our hair and eyes to the risks we have for cancer, heart disease, and many other illnesses. Back when I was leading that project, I thought to myself, what if we were to look at the genetics of many people, hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million, and combine that with other information about them, their environmental exposures, their diet and exercise habits, and their health history? 
Looking at all those factors would allow us to create a priceless resource that would speed up the research needed to deliver health care more precisely to, do, to each individual. No more one-size-fits-all, but optimized for each particular person. That's a concept we now call precision medicine. But if we really want to know about the factors that contribute to health and disease, we need to involve all communities. That hasn't always happened. So we have some big holes in our current understanding of health disparities, why some people are at higher risk of illness and even have shorter life expectancies. We can and we will do better, thanks to all of us. We already know that research that follows a group of people for a long time can help to identify risk factors that contribute to disease, information that can be used to develop better ways to prevent and treat the disease. The Framingham Heart Study, heard of that? May be the most famous instance of this type of study. Starting way back in 1948, researchers have followed several thousand residents of Framingham, Massachusetts for decades. And from the information gathered from these generous volunteers, they discovered that smoking, cholesterol, and high blood pressure are major risk factors for heart attacks and stroke. Believe it or not, before this, we didn't know those things, and many people thought that heart disease was just an inevitable part of aging. The knowledge gained from Framingham resulted in prevention and treatment measures that have saved many, many lives across the country. All of us will be 40 times larger than Framingham. It will study all diseases, yes, cardiovascular disease, but everything else too. And it will use a host of new and powerful technologies, and it will enroll a much more diverse group of participants. All of us will make the process of conducting research faster, easier, and less expensive. Imagine the power of a million people from all walks of life, all contributing thousands of pieces of information about their health, their environment, their genes, their lifestyle. These millions of data points will add up to one of the most powerful health research resources that we have ever had. And as a participant, as I am, because I signed up this morning, uh, you will have access to all of the information that has been derived about you, giving you a chance to learn a lot about your own health. Importantly, all of this will be done with rigorous security protections and data access policies in place. Other speakers will share more details, but rest assured that your privacy and the security of your data is a priority for all of us. In addition to being a broad resource for traditional academic researchers, all of us will also provide opportunities for citizen scientists to ask questions. That will enable us to bring even more brain power to each problem, paving the way for the next generation of biomedical breakthroughs. So this is the first exciting step in a very long journey to understand the health of one million people over their lifetime. The bottom line is that I think all of us is tremendously exciting and innovative, and I hope each of you who are listening will join us in this new national adventure, whether as a participant or a researcher, or maybe both. Now, as you can imagine, a research program involving a million people is extraordinarily complex. It takes an incredibly talented, devoted team to make it happen, and the person leading this team is Eric Dishman. I hired Eric away from Intel to run this program for NIH, and man, does he know how to run it. We knew Eric would be great because of his leadership skills, his experience as a highly respected Silicon Valley executive. But what really makes Eric perfect is his personal dedication to bringing precision medicine to everyone. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Eric Dishman, director of the All of Us Research Program, coming to you now from Detroit, Michigan. Well, thank you, Francis. And I got to tell you, with that introduction, we should hold national launches more often. I want to thank all of you here on Ford Field in Detroit. Go Lions! Woohoo! Uh, you know, and I want to thank everybody across the country for joining us today. And this is my topic. That's what I want to talk about. And that's my hope. All of you joining us to take our first small steps together to create uh, one of the most important research programs in human history. This has just never been done like this before. 
And while, yes, I am the leader of this effort, I am really here as a patient. I am here as a patient advocate. I am here as a, as a family caregiver, and I am proud to say also a participant in the All of Us Research Program. Now, I should tell you that I am alive today because I was lucky enough to be one of the early prototype patients saved by precision medicine. At 19, I was diagnosed with a rare form of kidney cancer and told I would be dead within nine months. Now, thankfully, they were wrong, but I did spend the next 23 years battling this misbehaving cancer, enduring more than 50 rounds of well-intentioned chemotherapy, radiation, immunotherapy, that we later discovered was destined never to have even worked on me. Now, I was eventually running out of options, and a colleague of mine helped me get access to whole genome sequencing and to get my complete electronic health record together. And armed with this new data, my doctors were able to understand my unique cancer and find me a treatment that was for me. So finally, I was cancer-free and eligible for a kidney transplant, and I am healthier standing before you today at age 50 than I was at 19. That's the power. That's the power of precision medicine. But the sad truth is, stories like mine are still very rare. Precision medicine is in its early days. Far too many people are still getting trial and error treatments for most conditions and diseases that are based on the average patient, based on research studies of people who may or may not be like them at all. But none of us are average. We need a healthcare system that responds to our uniqueness. To achieve this kind of individualized care, we need more data, we need more scientific evidence, we need more and different people. That's what joining the All of Us Research Program is about, being part of the power of one million diverse people coming together from across the country to create a future where my story is not so rare and you too have treatments designed for a unique you. So why join this? A lot of people will ask me that. And I'm like, look, while participants so far have described so many different motives and reasons for, joined, for joining, there are two themes that I hear from almost everybody, giving back and getting back. We all today benefit from the volunteerism of past research participants who gave of their time, their information, their surveys, their samples to make us, complete strangers today, healthier. So for many of us who have already signed up, we want to give back, or I suppose give forward, to future patients in need. I mean, I watched as arthritis crippled my grandmother, stealing away her ability to make these amazing chicken and dumplings that she loved to serve to us. And I watched Alzheimer's steal away my other grandmother completely. I saw my dad forced to retire early due to heart attacks and the surgeries that he had to go through, and I have witnessed more than a thousand cancer patients suffering side effects and too often losing the battles against just these unrelenting tumors. Donating to the future of health seems the least that I can do. But let's understand, research breakthroughs can take years, even decades for the data and the science to build up. Meanwhile, many participants are eager to get back their own health information. And we in the All of Us Research Program believe it is your right, it is your choice to get information and data back about your own health. I have been part of so many clinical trials and studies as a cancer patient where everything that I gave to them went into a black hole. But with all of us, we're developing systems to give you access to all of your health information, including any health records that we collect. If you're invited to donate blood, you can get your genetic information back to learn about your family traits, ancestry, risk factors, and how you might respond to different medicines. When we're ready to run lab tests, you might want information back that's gonna help you understand your environmental exposures from different places that you have lived and worked. And you will have the opportunity to see what researchers are doing with all of us data and to find out what they've learned over time. Now look, I totally understand this. Choosing to participate in a study like this is, is and should be a very personal decision, especially to make a commitment to stay with us for the many decades that we need this to last so we can see your, how your health changes as an individual and as a group of a million diverse people. So what's in it for you is probably in the eye of the beholder, but in addition to giving back to your community, to your country, 
you're also going to have the opportunity to sometimes know and perhaps even predict many aspects of your own health. Now, I want you to know, should you decide to volunteer, you will be joining an amazing and exciting startup of dedicated, compassionate people from all across the country. These seven sites today and 45 others who we're putting on local events are testament to that fact. The group of now over 100 health provider, academic, community, and corporate partners, we all met for the first time on July 6, 2016. We're not even two years old yet. We met back then, we broke bread together, and we got to work. And in record time, we got input from potential participants from diverse communities around the country. We developed this initial research protocol that many of you are starting today. Many of you have told me about that here on this field in lovely Detroit. We built the internet sites and the phone apps you're using to even watch this. We created a secure big data repository, and we opened over 125 enrollment clinics around the country. We developed a call center to be able to answer questions in both English and Spanish, and we constructed a biobank to safely store and freeze your samples coming in from anywhere across the country within 24 hours to the Mayo Clinic. We also importantly developed policies and protections to maintain your privacy. Look, if we lose your trust, then we lose the future of science. This is one of the most important things that we focused on. So we have protected the data warehouse where your information is encrypted and stored with the most advanced security available. Thanks to Congress, we have now the ability to use new laws that protect your research data from being used against you at the federal, state, local, or civil level. We've done and will keep doing rigorous security testing. But I want you to understand, we will always be transparent with you. There is no such thing as a 100% guarantee against today's hackers. So we've created procedures and policies to quickly notify you in the event a breach should ever threaten your data or your identity. All of this that we built, we then tested in a beta phase where tens of thousands of you who signed up, shared your data and consent, and gave us feedback to improve the experience for everybody else joining today's national launch. And I want to thank all of you who persisted and were patient with our early systems. But we are just at the beginning of an amazing journey. In the coming months, we're going to work with participants to pilot some new features, and then we'll expand those to everybody more interactive surveys on new topics that you care about, sharing wearable and fitness device data, collecting more complete health records, because it's really hard to get a thorough record about yourself, using health apps and smartphones, and responsibly sharing your genetic information once we start to do that. We will open more enrollment centers around the country as we see where different people across this great nation have signed up to join this effort, working hard to achieve our fundamental scientific mission, a million people who are geographically, demographically, and medically diverse from across this great nation. Now, I have to tell you, when my cancer was finally over, thanks to precision medicine, I received the miracle of a kidney transplant from an amazing coworker. And I'm still foggy from the anesthesia when I woke up from that transplant on the recovery table. And I wanted to just tell my wife, we've got to do this. I want to spend the rest of my days figuring out how to have the precision medicine that I had early access to available to everybody. So it is a dream come true for me. It is the highest honor to lead and build this national treasure. Powered by the volunteerism of one million or more people, the impacts of this public resource will not go down only in the medical books, but also, I believe, in the history books. So I hope you'll consider joining, shaping, and growing this startup, this All of Us research program. Let's see what amazing things we can do together to power up the science that can bring improved health and well-being to all of us as unique individuals. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for those wonderful, inspirational words for all of us to get involved. We so appreciate that, Eric, and we thank you for all your hard work with this. All right, 
you guys have heard it now. The vision for the All of Us Research Program, it's clear. And the excitement and the hope that we have in the future of research and health is really palpable here in Detroit. As you've heard from the previous speakers here today, we are all here for a very important reason, to raise awareness about the All of Us Research Program and to encourage people throughout Michigan and all across the country to get involved with this program. We are fortunate to have our own Henry Ford Health System as one of the 10 healthcare systems chosen for the All of Us Research pr Program. Pretty exciting. And to tell us more about the program and why it's important and how we all can benefit from it, we have a distinguished panel of speakers for you here today. I'd like to introduce to the stage, they're right here for you, Dr. Adnan Mukara. He's the Chief Clinical Officer of Henry Fourth Health System. Thank you for being here. Also, Dr. Suzanne White, the Chief Medical Advisor from the Detroit Health Department. Welcome. Dr. Christine Cole Johnson, the Chair of Henry Ford Department of Public Health Sciences. And Dr. Richard E. Smith, the Vice President, Physician Outreach for Henry Ford Hospital. So, th so thank you to the four of you for being with us. All right, we're going to start with Dr. Adnan Mukara. I, we will just let you take it away and speak for a couple of minutes. Thank you, Joanne. Good afternoon, everyone. It is so exciting to be here, and it is really an exciting day for me and hopefully for all of us with the launch of All of Us Research Program. On behalf of the Henry Ford Health System, I cannot tell you how excited and proud that we are one of the, will be one of the leaders of this program around the nation, chosen by the National Institute of Health, and will be able to partner with a group of distinguished institutions around the nation to improve our health. I would like to thank Eric Dishman for being here in Detroit today in the Ford Field celebrating this for us. Thank you, Eric, for being here. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank, to thank our own Detroit Lions organization for sharing with us this nice stadium today <laughs> and sharing it with our community. What is all of us? You've heard about it. It is really a significant effort for us to make medicine better, to improve our health, to drive us toward where we need to be preventing and treating disease. We really believe that the data that will be collected over the next few years will be essential for us to understand diseases better, understand diabetes, under, understand hypertension, understand stroke, cancer. Not only understand them, determine how we can prevent them, how we can diagnose them early, how we can treat them better, how we can go and get from a point where we are treating this one disease the same for everyone, irrespective of how diverse we are, to diseases when I go into my doctor's office and I will say, Adnan, this is your data, this is your genome, this is the drug that will work for you. And this is, I think, where we need to get. I've lost my father to, bre to brain cancer, and I have no doubt in my mind that in years from now, when we finish programs like this, we'll be able to manage and treat cancers and other diseases much, much better than we are now will be able to try, treat the right person with the right medication at the right time in the right location. This is what all of us will ha help us drive, and this is why we are so excited about it. And this is why we want all of you to be with us, partnering with us on this. All of us is not just a research idea. It is really a community movement. We really need all to be involved. We need the one million lives to be participants, to volunteer, I have. And I have it because of my conviction that this will help change medicine. This will help change our health. And I would, I would like to thank you for enrolling in the program. And if you have not, I would really like to kind of ask you to do it. I would like you to encourage your neighbor, your family member, your friend, your coworker to get in, uh, uh, and join the program. It is easy to do it. Go on henryford.com, join all of us, and here you go. You can be part of the one million person movement to improve our health. Thank you for being here, and I hope you'll be one of my partners on the All of Us Stand uh, Research Program. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mankara, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. 
We're going to hear now from Dr. Suzanne White. And I know, Dr. White, you're going to talk a little bit about the disparities. Part of this whole thing is to kind of to overcome the disparities in health research. And you want to address that a little bit. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, first, I'd like to just offer, on behalf of the city and the health department, heartfelt <laughs> congratulations to Henry Ford Health System and the NIH. This is such an exciting partnership. And I think the discoveries that I'm very confident are going to come out of this are going to really help Detroiters live he healthier and, and happier lives. Um, each day uh, working in the city, uh, I face patients and community members who are really uh, challenged by many different health disparities. And I wanted to just share a few of those with you. Um, beginning with our very, very earliest um, populations, nearly 14 out of every 1,000 babies in the city of Detroit don't reach their first birthday. So we have a significant problem with infant mortality in the city. Um, this problem is three times higher than elsewhere in the state or the country. It really, the rates, the infant mortality rates in Detroit parallel those that we see in underdeveloped countries. Um, this rate has not changed in over a decade. And so we hope to see amazing discoveries in this area um, to help our youngest community members um, reach their full potential. Another big problem that's occurring in the city over the past five years is we've seen the number of deaths from drug overdose increase by five times in the city of Detroit. And that reflects, in part, untreated mental health disorders or undiagnosed mental health disorders or substance abuse disorders. Um, and that is another significant disparity. We are one of the cities with the highest burden of that particular condition as well. In terms of chronic disease in our older adult populations, for example, uh, we have three times the rate of diabetes, obesity, and heart disease as across the state. And in fact, Detroit has been listed as one of the top 10 cities out of the 500 major cities in the United States as having a high burden of these conditions. In some of our Detroit neighborhoods, over 50% of people suffer from diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. That's one out of every two people in the city. So, my belief is that research is a really powerful change agent. And it's not that very well-meaning individuals have not tried to address some of these disparities in the past. It's simply that we need to understand more. And we need to understand how we can uniquely diagnose and treat and cure some of these conditions. Uh, so with that, I have to echo what Dr. Mankara said. Um, we really appreciate everybody's enrollment uh, and encouraging your family, your friends, your co-workers uh, to enroll as well. And again, congratulations. Thank you so much, Dr. White. Before we hear from you two, we do want to bring up um, a couple people who have signed up today. We are so excited to have them. Come on up, come on up and join us here. We just want to take a second to talk to you because, as Dr. Makara said, really the success of this is going to depend on the people who sign up and take part in this and are one of the million, or in this case, four of the million, or maybe more if you signed your whole family up. So we, hey, first of all, thank you for being here. If you could tell me your name, where you're from, and why you decided to sign up. Okay. My name is Christina, and I'm from Detroit, and I live in Dearborn. And the reason I signed up is because I battled cancer and I survived it. And I think that because of research and um, programs such as this, I think that's going to help to make future medicine even better. You've been, a, you've been in remission now, you're doing well? Yep, I'm a cancer survivor, five years, I'm great. Congratulations, congratulations, it's wonderful. We hope that we can help people like you and that's why you wanna get involved and we appreciate that very much. Let me step over here for just a second. What's your name, where you're from and why John, did you sign up? John Randall from Farmington Hills and I just wanna live a long, healthy life like my grandma just lost her and she lived in a, until 100 great years. 100 years old. Yeah, just wow. lost her. Okay. I'm sorry about that, but what a life, huh? Yeah. Well, we thank you for taking part in this. Thank you, you for know, having we me. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much.
Your name, where are you from? My name is Bridget Knox. I live in Bloomfield Township. Um, I work at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Great hospital, by the way. So that's one of the reasons I signed <laughs> up. And I had an older brother that died of brain cancer over 10 years ago, so I think it's really important. There is so much research, particularly with brain cancer. I know it is just, uh, I've got a good friend who's, whose son has it, and the gentleman lost his wife to it, and it's just so difficult. So anything we can do to understand it more, right? That's, I agree with that. Wonderful. Well, thank you for signing up. We appreciate it. Do love West Bloomfield Hospital. <laughs> All right. And your name? I am Bruce Johnson, and I'm from Livonia, Michigan. Um, I'm a science teacher from training, and I've always uh, stressed with the kids how important data is. I get to be a data point now, yes, so you do. good for me. That's right. You signed up today or are going uh, to? I signed up, yes. Wonderful. Well, what do you hope to get out of it? I hope to be a, actually a point of research. So, I mean, obviously, if they give us some results that we can benefit from now, that'll be a plus for us also. So Wonderful. the precision medicine idea. Yeah. Well, thank you to the four of you. We appreciate it. Four of a million, right, you guys? <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you. We appreciate it very much. It's going to take people like all of you to, to make a difference here, all of us, as a matter of fact. All right, let's get back to some of our doctors. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Christine Cole Johnson. You are co-leading Henry Ford's group of health providers tasked for enrolling participants. So that sounds like a big job because we're talking a million people. That's right. It is a big job. And what we're trying to do, Detroit, is to take care of some of these problems that Dr. White just mentioned and make us the healthiest city in the country, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. <laughs> um, and I want to thank people that came. I also want to thank, we have collaborators here from all the way uh, from Minnesota, Massachusetts, Western Mis Michigan and Grand Rapids, um, and Texas. So thank you for coming all this way. I've, I've been a scientist for 33 years now at Henry Ford, and mostly working in allergy and asthma prevention and trying to figure out how to detect cancer early, and been on a lot of projects, but there's been none like this one that's so innovative and so novel. This uh, having, you know, I, look at my glasses here. How would a lot of people I see are wearing glasses or have contacts. How would you like it if we all wore the same glasses? It wouldn't work too well. These have been designed just for me and I even got to pick out the color. <laughs> that's what precision medicine is all about. We're gonna try to make all of medicine as precise as our prescription glasses. And if we have this incredibly large collection of data and specimens from over a million people, just think of what we can do. Part of the problem with research is, it, is it's kind of slow. It takes a long time to find the people eligible for a study, and then you have to follow them up and collect a lot of data. In this case, the data is going to be there already. And scientists can answer all kinds of questions very quickly. You know, why a medicine works for some people and not for others. Why maybe even what diet is best for you. And if somebody develops a medicine, a new one, we can figure out by looking at the database who would benefit from it and just contact them directly. This project, as was also mentioned uh, earlier, is also different than anything I've ever worked on because instead of considering the people in the project as subjects, research subjects, they're actually participant partners. And because of this, not only, you know, usually when you're in a study, you never find out the results, and you never find out your own results. But in this case, people will be offered their results back, even their genetics, if they want it. And they also are able to participate in this study and suggest ideas for the scientists to discover. They're also already working. In fact, there's people right here from Michigan who are helping to design the surveys, helping to get people in involved in it, um, helping to design the study. So one of the goals of, of all of us is to really speed up science so that doctors and scientists can advance medicine in this country more quickly than before. I think that um, you know, all the people in this big room are, are gonna have somebody they know that will benefit from this. And in fact, it might even be you. But for sure, the children, the youngsters in this room, and their children are going to really benefit from this. So, you know, I joined. I got my All of Us thing here, <laughs> bracelet. And I hope I, I joined because I want to make a difference for the future. I know some of you have already joined, and that's fantastic. And if you haven't, I hope you will join and become part of this. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Dr. Christine Cole Johnson, thank you very much. And lastly, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Richard Smith. For those of you who may not know, Dr. Smith is a longtime OBGYN physician who has delivered generations of babies at Henry Ford Hospital. Now, you're not that old to deliver generations of babies. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for your work and thank you for involvement in this. What's the message you'd like to share? Well, I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity of just taking care of people in the city of Detroit for so many years. The trust that you've put in me and the families for the last four decades, going on wow. five decades now, a delivering It's been a remarkable experience and sharing your lives with me. And I, I often tell folks that I, I learned calculus to the, to the sounds of Motown. I learned biology to the sounds of the victors. And uh, I learned how to do surgery and deliver babies, listening to the music that the families would bring in while the mother is laboring there. And, and in doing so, you learned about the diversity of our culture, the diversity of our population here, and how every special, every baby is so special in different as into this world. Uh, I just have been an honor. As I mentioned, I, I'm from Detroit. I, I'm more than Detroit than anybody here. My grandfather's grandfather was born here in Detroit. Heck, in the end zone back there, I was baptized in the end zone there. <laughs> there used to be a church there, St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. Hey, there's a plaque on the wall in the parking structure that talks about that. You can't get any more of Detroit than that. And I believe in this community, I believe in the state of Michigan and the people of this country, that all together, all of us can work towards this goal to achieve, to achieve this success here. And I, I tell you that just like just a couple of just brief examples I'll give you. Uh, uh, Representative uh, Dingle was here earlier. We talked about how we used to, how we met. We met in one of the churches when, when in the back rooms of, of different schools as we, as we led that fight for infant mortality, how to provide prenatal care. It's called Baby Your Baby Campaign. And we were able to do that. We were show how you, how you lower infant mortality. It became the law of the land recently, how women can get prenatal care. But it took all of us working together for this to happen. And it took places in the hospitals in Flint, in Jackson, Michigan, in Detroit, all of us working together towards that goal. Now, as we look across the room, we, everybody's kind of young here, but if you talk to your parents and your grandparents, they'll tell you about the scourge of polio had in the, for this nation and to the whole world. But that was solved. That was solved in a laboratory not far from here in Ann Arbor by Dr. Jonas Salk. He's by everybody coming together, the school children, they walked, they collected dimes, the mothers, everybody pulled together. All of us here in Michigan did that with, with people from around the country. I'm very optimistic. I see no health challenge that we cannot meet. I mean, this is what we face. We do great things here in Michigan. So pulling together, we can conquer. We want everybody to participate. No longer should a woman have to go to a doctor's office with a small little breast tenderness and lump and says, you don't feel that algorithm, so we're not going to do any testing on your breast and a 25-year-old dies from breast cancer. That shouldn't happen anymore. We should be able to identify the genes. That's right. That shouldn't happen. We should be able to find out, all of us sitting in one row who have high blood pressure, we should be able to identify the, the modality of treatment for each and every one of you based upon the genetics and the environment that you're in. I see no health challenge that we cannot meet. If we all work together, that's what this program is for. This is what we can do as a community here. I ask everybody to participate, sign up, and let's go forward. Woo! <laughs> I am motivated. Dr. Smith, thank you very much. Just incredible, and that's what it's gonna take is all of us. I just wanna ask you a few questions. We've got about 10 minutes left on this today. And uh, I know some of this was addressed in, uh, by some of the other national stuff that we heard, but I'd like to, uh, to revisit it just for people. I think there will be people who will hear it and they'll say, I love this idea, this is so great, but gosh, I'm so scared about privacy. Eric, you talked about this. And, and we know so many steps have been taken, but if you could, if someone says, well, I don't want the, the government or the NIH to know my name and my this and my results of this. Can someone address a little bit more about, about the privacy aspect of that and try to allay any fears that someone could have? Um, I guess I, that would be me. Okay. <laughs> um, every precaution possible, I mean, everyone knows that that is a concern, I think. Um, in fact, you know, it's a concern for me. I'm, I'm in the project. But I think every possible uh, protection is being put in place. In fact, that's, that's one reason it's taken a while. This has been in a pilot phase for uh, a year. And, and the NIH wanted to make sure that everything was just so, everything was you know, right on so that we wouldn't have any kind of breach. And there's also things such as that personal data is kept separate from research data so that it can't be connected, which is what we usually do in research uh, as a matter of fact. So. Um, you know, 
I mean, nothing's 100% in this world, but I think it's 99.999 safe. So your name is separate from the data right, that right, they're actually right. studying. That's correct. Okay. And you, you can't see other people's data individually. You can just see yours if you so choose. Got it. Okay. Good. Good to know. Long term, what are you, what are you most excited about? What do you think that this project with a million people can perhaps have the biggest influence on? Is there one thing or is that just an impossible question? Well, the thing the is, well, all of us are in, we're going to look at everything. Yeah. I think we just can't say we just want this one goal and that's it and go and sit, sit on our laurels. We have still have serious health problems, as the doctor pointed out. I still don't know why some babies are just born premature. We still don't know why some women get what's a disease called toxemia in pregnancy. With all the research that we do, there's something else going on there. We still don't know why that infant mortality rate is high. Let's look at all the factors, the environment, the individuals, the genetics, the healthcare that's going on simultaneously. We can address that. We can't limit it to one. We want to look at all. That's why, again, I say we all of us need to be all in for this, and let's go forward with this. So, Joanne, what this will provide us at the present time is the data to be able to launch thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of research projects in the future hmm. to address what we need to do. And what's great about this, this is the first time we are looking at so many factors, not only medical and health factors, not only genetic factors, but environmental factors, mm -hmm. how we live, what we eat, where we are moving to, which apartments we are, or house we have moved from and to. And this is what we, what's going to make us be a healthier community and a healthier nation, being able to understand the, all this information, pull it together, and see how we can use it to move and have healthier and longer lives. Which is wonderful, that's what we all want. Uh, certainly, let me ask, I think, was it, uh, Dr. Johnson, are you in charge of, of working with getting people signed up, correct? How will it be if I go to my OBGYN? Are there gonna be signs up? Am I gonna, because if people aren't watching the, these telecasts and on Facebook and all this stuff today, how are we getting the word out to people? There's lots of different ways that we are trying to reach out. So there's a national presence that you just saw start today, which I think will be very helpful in spreading the word. Uh, locally at all different sites involved with us as well as in other uh, cities and uh, groups. Um, they're all doing their, uh, both social media and um, uh, you know, newspapers and things like that. And also through their clinics and um, friends and every way they can to try to get people involved. Uh, the website is one really good way to, to start out. Okay, good. How about getting more than a million? Eric, can we get more than a million, do you think? Ten million. <laughs> Ten million, all right. We'll start with one million, I know. We'll start with that nice round number, right? Um, does one of you want to address, again, I know we saw it, we saw it earlier, but address the process of signing up. Is this really laborious or is it a pretty easy thing to actually get involved in? Okay, I guess I'll take that one too, okay. or boots on the ground. Um, it, you know, it's not that, that difficult to be a part of this. First you sign up, you have to do what's called uh, an informed consent online that explains the project to you so you'll know what, what it's all about. Um, after that, you do some surveys. Now there's three or four surveys that don't take very long, 30 minutes or so. Um, asking about your health. And then um, you need to go to a clinic, a clinic visit. Uh, people, some people will be asked to go there and provide a blood sample and a um, urine sample. And um, we expect in the future there will be other surveys for you to fill out. And there may be opportunities for you to do things like wear a Fitbit like this and have that connected up so that people can see how much you move around. The other thing, for people thinking this may be, this is, is really laborious and not just the signing up, but the process through the years. It's not like you're gonna be filling something out once a week to be part of this program, correct? No, no. Okay. Uh, I, I think, I mean, we want people to get stay involved and stay in touch, but you know, every few months or so, or Wonderful. no more than that, people might be asked to do a survey. It's still in the planning. It, it reminds me, uh, you know, when I was a kid, when the moon shot, when we wanted to go to the moon, and we didn't really even have the technology to go there. I, I remember this, and um, we knew we wanted to go to the moon, but we weren't sure how to get there, and we didn't even have the technology to do it. But I think this is what this is like, that it's this gigantic program for the United States, and we know where we want to go, and we don't even have all the technology, so we can't exactly predict what's going to happen, but it's going to be fantastic. 
Dr. Smith, did you want to add something? I, thought uh, I just want to say I agree with you on that. You know, living through that and looking at, at uh, the, the, the space race, it was an exciting time for our younger lives. The younger people don't have a clue about that at all, but it was a very exciting time. What's going to make this work also, If when I say all, I mean all. We need people from diverse backgrounds, diverse ethnic groups, different regions of the country, different regions of the city to participate in that so we can truly get a, a perspective on where this is coming from. That's how it would benefit you. That's how it would benefit everyone in the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan, and this nation. So we can got to get as many people involved in our smaller communities to participate this. There's a trustworthy side on that. And uh, just come forward. Wonderful. Does anyone have a question out here that you have that I could repeat so that people at home could hear? Anyone? Eric, did we not touch on something? What else do we need? Um, I think I think what 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 they said was right. I mean, I called it a startup a little bit ago, and it's not that we're not planned. We have a plan for the first couple of years and in, in a line of sight, thanks to uh, Congresswoman Dingell and others who supported a bill called 21st Century Cure and funding for the first 10 years. But you know, like somebody said earlier today, we didn't. Or, or Representative Dingell said. You know, it wasn't that long ago we didn't have smartphones. We don't know what's coming out next. Right. But as we will grow with you as a cohort over time and really look forward to kind of inventing this and figuring it out as we go along. But, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, you go to joinallofus.org. There are libraries around the country, clinics around the country, community partners who will be holding events. For many people who are not digitally savvy, there will be people that can help them get online and go through this process. Awesome. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a chance to be one in a million. Um, if we find out that it's easy to do one million or easier than we thought, because we'll no up. one's ever done it, <laughs> yeah. then we'll aim for 10 million after awesome. that. But let's get the one million first. Let me get the question over here real quick. Um, Lee Iacocca, research on diabetes, he referenced there. Don't know if, uh, if not, I can have you come up and talk to them afterwards too, okay? Right there? Yeah, that was my question. That okay. Because I heard it on radio maybe two years ago, and I read part of his book. It was fascinating to know. Got it. Well, we'll try to follow up on that. You mentioned politics for one second, Debbie Dingle. I want to say one thing. Um, I know part of how this all got going in the country, it passed the Senate 95 to 5. What passes the Senate 95 to 5, right? So we got everybody on board with this. So that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. You guys, we only have about three minutes left, but uh, Dr. Smith? Going back to what you said, you never know where you're going to end up in some of these sort of things. One process improvement would lead to another process improvement and things you've never even thought about. The classic example, I think, was Henry Ford when he came out with the assembly line and the Model T. He changed America as people began the Great Migration. And also during that period of time, it says he created the middle class. But one little fact and statistic for the city of Detroit, the infant mortality rate since the time of the assembly line and the Model T was cut in half in 15 years wow. just because of that. Incredible. We don't know what, what can come out of this, but we know it's going to be incredible. It can really only be incredible when we see the wealth of information that we can get when we have a million people. All right, real quick question. You've got a microphone. All right. So we talked a lot about young people getting involved. Um, how old do you need to be to enroll in are there uh, enrollment for children planned in the future? So there's no age limit. In fact, um, Someone in the audience, my mom, uh, is in it, and she's 89. Woo! Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, it is true that uh, right now it's from 18 up, but uh, in the ne near future, in the next year, I'm actually on a committee that has to organize the recruitment of uh, children from birth all the way through 18. Wow. And that is definitely planned, um, should start up in 2019. Wonderful. We, we need to study kids, too. Yeah, absolutely we do. Well, we want to thank the four of you. Um, the doctors will be here, I'm sure, off stage. I just signed you up for just a second if you have a question. Um, go easy on them. Eric is here as well. I do want to thank all of you in the audience here and all of you at home for watching this as well. On behalf of Henry Ford Health System and the National Institutes of Health, thank you for participating in the All of Us Research Program. Thanks to the four of you for taking the time and, and being so passionate about this. We know that great things can come of this, and we thank you for sharing your message today. So we have a minute left, and in the minute we have left, you guys, I need to tell you that if anyone's still here, there's prizes that nobody has claimed. 
So I want you to know that uh, that there are wonderful passes. Should I do this, you guys, during this, or maybe okay? Real quick, nine one nine three seven five. If you have that number, you've won four zoo passes, fifty dollar Amazon gift card, nine two seven two two zero. And I will stay up here with these numbers, okay? Pocket Watch Shinola, 919-605. A $50 Amazon gift card, 927-635. Four Tigers tickets, 928-783. And 9201-162. And finally, tickets for FC Soccer, 919-357. I have the list up here. If you have one of those numbers, please come on up. You can get your prize at, um, at Gate G. Thank you, all of you. We hope all of you will consider joining up for the all of joining or signing up for the All of Us Research Program. Thank you for watching today. Be a part of the future of medicine. And again, to all of you doctors, thank you so much. Have a great day. Safe travels, everyone.